Merci. Thank you, Ghislaine. Um, it is uh, with great excitement that I'm uh, getting to uh, meet uh, all of the audience and, and uh, to welcome our, our panel. Um, so, so hello to, uh, to Pei, to Luc and Patrick. Bonjour, Luc, Patrick, Pei. Bonjour. Bonjour. Bonjour tout le monde. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Virtual Montreal in District 3. Yes, sir. Um, I, I would like uh, the, the audience to, to, to maybe warm up and get to know you uh, first, if, if you don't mind, before we go on to the, the panel discussions. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. sure. Yeah. If you could just answer the question, like I'll ask each one of you a question, and if you can answer just in one or two words, okay. and um, that, that'll, that'll warm things up. So, so Luke, let's start. What, what gets you up in the morning? I think the, uh, the, the pleasure and honor to speak or chat with entrepreneurs. That's our life. Thank you. And, uh, and Pei, yourself, what motivates you to, to invest so much of yourselves in the bioeconomy? Uh, the opportunity to bring new technology to market. Cool. Um, and, and Patrick, what wakes you up at night? Um, am I having enough impact? Are we creating enough impact for, for our economy, our society? That's, that's what wakes me up. Definitely. Oh, I can completely relate to that one, Patrick. Well, well welcome again to, to all of you. And, and let's start with the questions. Uh, Pei, um, Indie Bio is, to my knowledge, you know, the, the largest bio accelerator in the world. Um, you guys have been investing in, in biotech startups before anyone else that I, that I know of, uh, certainly as actively. You're, you're real visionaries. You, you've invested in more than, than two of, you know, not in more, in actually two of our D3 startups, Drop Genie and Hyacinth. Um, so so you, you know the world over from, from Quebec to around the, the planet. What, what's your vision for the bioeconomy for Quebec? For Canada, what, 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 from your perspective, might be our strength and and we move forward fast? You know, it's a, it's hard to say specifically for Quebec. Um, I think that the bioeconomy in general is a great opportunity for many, uh, for for many regions to really take advantage of. Uh, existing capabilities in in science and technology and applying it into all new spaces and applications that um, actually have an have a chance to be sustainable uh, and really thinking about what an economy that's not solely extractive that's not solely a consumption based economy and really thinking about how to bring about new products that um, may leverage waste, for example, and circularizing the economy, or uh, bringing about much lower energy approaches to producing materials through synthetic biology and, and uh, biofermentation, um, more water efficient manufacturing approaches through uh, more efficient green chemistry techniques, for example. All of these really um, will and are likely to take advantage of the immense advances that have been made recently in being able to engineer biology with predictability and with reproducibility. Uh, and I think that opportunity is, is something that um, Quebec, Canada uh, can, can really harness, um, especially given the rich sort of university science and technology background that y'all have, um, as well as the, the strength of, of your government support in R&D. Yes, yes, that, that's giving us a, a lot of hope. I, I completely relate to, to the fact that the, the bioeconomy is here and, it, and we have the capabilities to, to jump on board um, and, um, and, and get things done with, with creation of value and at the same time having a really positive impact on, on our planet. So, yeah, I completely relate. Thank you. Um, pa Patrick, um, the, the, the bio disruption in, in the sustainable world, where do you think we should head? I mean, there's so many directions. There's there's biomass with with alternative energy. There's alternative sourcing to, to petrochemical strains. There's there's new food sources with with much less greenhouse impact. Where, where do you see us go? Where do you see Canada? Where where do you see bio? Where should bio focus? 
That's that's a that's a huge question, as you know. That yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thought I'd set you up. We we could we could take two hours just to talk about travel. How do we you know how do we positively impact travel through bio and then food for another two hours? I mean, it's 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 massive what's happening right now. Um, and, and you know, I I wouldn't know where to, where to begin. I, I'm just thinking of, of some examples that we have on hand close enough that. Uh, some examples of, of startups, I think, that are that are inspiring. I'm thinking about uh, planetary hydrogen, uh, to, to, to name a few. That one, planetary hydrogen, uh, really focused on developing clean clean hyd- hydrogen through a, a super um, interesting process. Agrisoma as well, that um, produces biofuels um, with a non-food crop, uh, is another example. So I, I think biofuels is is a hot, very very hot topic. How can we, you know, uh, how can we uh, replace existing uh, biofuels? Um, how can we replace existing um, means of of uh, combustion or engine combustion to with with other, you know, uh, bio products? I think is is a massive uh, a massive uh, undertaking, and I think is a track that that is going to be worthwhile of looking. You know, looking out for um, and, and pursuing. That's one one area where, where I see a lot of advancement. Um, how do we leverage waste as well? You know, for, to 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 produce uh, biofuel eventually. Um, I like what's happening in, in bioplastics. You know, I, I love the, the Bosk. Bosk is one other example, uh, which I which I, I love to 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 see uh, grow. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if, if you all you're all familiar with Bosk, um, um, Canadian based company. Uh, they they develop compostable material from, uh, you know, from forest uh, byproducts, right? So it's fully compostable, bioplastics made from biomass. I think it's an amazing concept. Um, so that's that's another area I think that's really rich in terms of uh, disruption and innovation. You know, biochemicals um, I think are going to be super interesting to watch how do we develop um from the biomass you know materials um like like uh you know uh, plastics uh path for packaging i, I think are, are all uh, tracks that are super super interesting to watch hydrogen as well you know how do we how do we produce produce clean hydrogen that that can be readily readily used for uh transportation marine transportation air transportation so I mean, I'm just scratching the surface here, Xavier. But this, these are all super, super, you know, fascinating uh, subjects. Yeah. So, so I hear you. You're you're joining the pay in, in saying that the world is is extremely wide. There's tons of opportunities. It's a question of of you know getting moving. Um, you're basically telling our audience, you know, you guys are waiting for investment opportunities. You, you're not being very you know picky on on which field it's going to be. Just get stuff done is your message, right? Yeah, the money, you know, we're going to talk about investments a little later on, but I mean, the, 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 the money for investing is there. Uh, what we need is projects. We need more, we need a richer pipeline of, of potential startups that are going to grow massively over the next five years. That's really what we're looking for. And I, that, that's one message I wanted to convey today. Great. Uh, we'll come back to that point because that's a really important point because I think the world is not sure about that right now. So that's great to come back to it. <laughs> Luke, I, I want to ask you a question first about, you know, they, they I, I, in many cases, to be investor ready, in, in, they need to be product ready uh, with, with some some development roadmap. Um, how, how do you see the the our current uh, government policies when it comes to, to product roadmap in, in non-dilutive for for, for the bio efforts? I can surely ta- talk about the ARA program. The ARA program, uh, if you go back a few years, we were essentially investing in de-risking technologies. But in the re- more recent years, we give more importance to the business case because this is the return. We're giving out money, non-refundable money to, uh, to SMEs, so we, we we have to see a return for for the Canada for the taxpayers, and the return is shown in the business case. In the uh, all the other sectors, the uh, the the return is f- 
fairly easy to measure because it's it's sales. Basically, we give you uh, one million and we expect you to uh, generate 10 million of sales in four or five years. That's easy to be done. But in life science, it's not that easy. Yeah. But we look at uh, uh, in, in the investor, the valuation of the company that increase and uh, enable them to get uh, more uh, uh, more investments from the private uh, sector uh, without diluting themselves too much. So, so you do have a, a, a I, I wouldn't say a, a specific approach for bio, but you're going to be looking at different criteria if you're if you're uh, if you're helping out um, those that are in the bio world and those that are creating their business cases for for their product development. So that exactly, that's exactly the business case has to show the, some return for the biotech industry is different. It, it will be a creation of jobs, a benefit for the health of Can of Canadian. Uh, wealth uh, increase, etc. But mostly investments they will uh, secure over the years. Okay, good. Um, let, let's let's get then into to our investors here. Uh, hey, and Patrick, what what in your mind makes our our uh, entrepreneurs ready for you to seriously consider them? Let's just say it the way it is. I was really happy to hear from from you, Patrick, that that. Uh, the the invest the investors are out there. It's wrong to say that they're not out there for bio in, in Canada. It's not because they're they're not named bio investors that they're not there. But but you're uh, let us know what you want them to have reached before they come and see you. Do you want to take that page? Or do you want to, or do you want to, uh, sure, to uh, sure. I, I mean, oh, so. At Indie Bio, we really have the advantage in that we operate at a very early stage. We will take companies uh, that are a, a paper idea um, and a couple co-founders who have the technical wherewithal to move forward and put together a proof of concept. Uh, we, we can take on that risk because we're very, very early stage pre-seed um, program and investor. Um, so because we get to get to look at companies that early, we have much more flexibility in terms of evaluating uh, the, the appropriateness of that investment. Um, a proof of concept really to us means we need to have some idea that this is scientifically possible. There's no laws of physics that have to be broken in order to, to do this. Um, and and there's, there is a path and there may be multiple paths and we're not wedded to single paths. What we really care about are solutions um, and what that solution is going to enable in the future. And so uh, with that in mind, we are, are very open as long as you can show us that there is a, a solution to some kind of long-standing problem or large-scale problem affecting human and or planetary health. In many ways, those two are intertwined and overlapping, but um, that's that's really where we look. Um, ideas are abundant. It really is a matter of bringing together the right starting team to execute um, and, and really credibly say, we are ready to commit our lives to this idea and, and solving this problem. And we have, we have a reason for believing we can do that. That's cool. Um, you're, you're basically giving a, a lot of, you know, scientists a lot of confidence here because you're saying <laughs> we're, we're not looking for R and D. So, so don't come and show us something that's not technology ready, so to speak, but, but you are looking for very competent teams that, that can go the distance and, and deliver. Um, we, I'll, I'll, I'll adjust that slightly. I'll say we're looking for teams that are ready to do the development and get to a product. The R part is, you know, sometimes a necessary part of the process. But um, we, we're ready for teams that that want to really hit the ground and get that development underway and move towards product milestones. They may be very, very early product milestones. They don't have to be getting to an MVP, as it were. Um, it really is about making sure that we have confidence that the concept is is feasible, albeit risky. Okay. Yeah, and, and I remember when you guys invested in, uh, you were one of the first investors, if not the first, I think, in Hyacinth, uh, which are, are today the first company to ever 
commercialized medical uh, or, or medical application CBD, and um, and and you were there the whole uh, the whole way, starting with with basically an ideas team. And I remember when the boys were just around the ideas table. So really cool. Thank you. Uh, and and you, Patrick, what 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 is it that um, that that EcoFuel and Cycle Capital look for um, when when it comes to you? Uh, it, it's are, it's uh, it's great that uh, Pay started on, on on this question because uh, we're we're we come after in the continuum, right? So we're typically uh, we're an accelerator. So we we're, we um, we help entrepreneurs that are at a point where they're uh, validating product market fit. So. Um, uh, really, that's that's the um, that's where we um, we help entrepreneurs, and we're looking for um, uh, startups that have uh, a product they're starting to sell in the market. They're they're looking to to you know to find that sweet spot um, and, and really to grow their business. And one thing I find is that um, a lot of the the, the scientific uh, profile entrepreneur. Uh, has the has a sort of tendency to to you know surround himself or herself with with other scientists or you know uh, engineers with and really the feedback we give uh, oftentimes is that we need to you know we need to have um, a balance we're looking for that balance between you know the scientific entrepreneur and the business minded entrepreneur to 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 complement each other and and oftentimes it's not the tech. That is that is uh, the, the 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 real issue, is product market fit is is you know validating with your clients. I oftentimes talk to entrepreneurs uh, that that have you know all their product mapped out um, and and how it's going to be used and but they didn't they didn't talk to a whole lot of clients right they didn't do that customer validation phase uh, thoroughly and and didn't apply a scientific method to develop a, developing their market if you want. Uh, and that's something that um, I often are, uh, that we look for, you know, in, in an entrepreneur that has the ability to to you know to, to validate, uh, to do customer validation, and and really to validate the business model. So I think that's really one aspect that needs to be uh, um, looked into and and really developed is is uh, the business side of of the um, of the startup project. If, yeah, you, if I could you, add on to that, um, actually, uh, you know, one thing that we we try and put a lot of effort into is it, we we often have very technical founders. Uh, the vast majority of our founders are PhDs that develop the the concepts either in their in their graduate research or their postdoctoral research. Um, what we strive to do is help transition scientists into a business-minded entrepreneur who's capable of, of reaching those goals um, that uh, Patrick just mentioned and, uh, and being able to think about that customer and, and, and be empathetic to the customer um, and think about that product market fit. And we view that as, as really a, a process of uh, <laughs> re-education in some ways. Uh, um, there's some aspects of being a scientist, a trained scientist, that uh, don't lend themselves too well uh, on the business side. And so finding that balance is, is one thing that we work towards. Yeah, yeah, and, it, and it's, um, it's, um, it's a journey. Uh, we, we find that, you know, we focus on, on scientific entrepreneurs in, in partnership with, uh, with several other organizations. And, and on one hand, we've got, you know, bright people that, that need to, to accept that they're going back to school when they're <laughs> becoming entrepreneurs, and, and that's that's not an easy thing to do. And then we need to to get them to understand what you know the value of doing a hundred customer interviews in in twelve weeks, and and that that's doable. We've seen them do it, um, but but there's a, it's a transformation. And I'm going to go back to 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 an important point that, that Patrick was mentioning. Um, you know, team building is is where. You know, an enterprise becomes an enterprise. It's by definition a bunch of people, right? So, so you, you need other skills. You can't be good at everything, and so that that's really important. Yeah, uh, Luc, when 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 uh, when you're working with these these people that are coming to build their business case, what, what's your uh, what's your sweet spot? Where where is it that you wish they would have done more, or you you want them to be open to in in working with you? Uh, most of them. Uh, they are scientists or engineers and they, they're not business people, most of them. So they come with uh, 
predictions of sales that are not backed up by in the real world so they uh, they're not credible uh, they should they should speak to other people they should uh, validate their market first uh, they often come with big numbers you know this is a two billion market uh, um, uh, value but they don't specify where they will get their sales and how they will do that and this is what we, we like to see. Uh, often they come and they say, oh, uh, it's, it's a great technology and uh, uh, it will sell. Yeah, it will sell. <laughs> That's not enough for us. But did you, yeah, and the question is, well, it will sell. Did you talk to a client actually? You know, how many clients did you talk to to make that, yeah. that, that, that assumption, right? And that's where oftentimes you've got, you've got a lot of work to do, right? right. Um, Sorry, and I didn't know, want to interrupt. I, 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 I talked to a lot of people, like maybe, uh, I don't know, 500 entrepreneurs per year. And mm -hmm. uh, it's always, uh, it's, it's often the, the same scenario. They, they talk about their technology. They, they, they're in love in their technology. So in about about five minutes, I, I told them, okay, I get it. I know what is your technology. Now I want to know what is your business. That is more important for us to know what is your business, where are you gonna sell, when are you gonna sell, etc., etc. And so they, they try to speak a little bit about the business, but they they're getting out of, of their comfort zone, and they get back to the technical stuff very often. And we have and I have to tell them, yeah, you told me. I don't. I know what you've done. I know what you're doing. I want to talk business. So they and that's that's skills, a, that's. Yeah, go on. Yeah. Yes, sorry, uh, Luke. And I, I think that's a, it's a great point. Uh, and I see that too. Oftentimes, the entrepreneur who's in love with his tech, you know, that's, and that's... That's their baby. That's their baby. Yeah. And that's oftentimes uh, an issue because uh, you, sometimes you need to fall out of love with your tech mm -hmm. to, to rebuild the business model, right? You, mm -hmm. you, you have to have that sort of distance perspective on, on what you've built to adapt it to the market, unfortunately, or fortunately, because you you found you found a new opportunity, and that's something. Sometimes, sometimes I think that as investors, what uh, you know, what investors look for is 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 that person coachable. Whether he's a scientist or a business person or a market marketing person, is that person coachable? Is he willing? Her was she willing to listen? Uh, and, and adapt and, and evolve, evolve the business model, evolve the technology over time. I think that's one of the crucial tests that has to be. Uh, yeah, good point. We do this all the time. The first five or 10 minutes, we're trying to see if he's coachable. If he's not, he's done. Guys, it's really important. And, and I think we, we need more coaches. By the way, if there's any bio coaches out there, give me a call because I'm looking for some. I've got some questions from the audience for you guys. Um, Patrick, I think this one's for you. Um, animal agriculture is one of the most, um, the, the main factors of, of greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and uh, they believe, it's believed that alternative protein products um, could reduce this, these impacts of, of animals on, on, the, on the planet. It, it, do you consider that as a clean tech in, investor, as, an in, as a clean tech project? Absolutely. Um, um, and, and like I said at the beginning of the call here, uh, you know, we, we don't have enough with this, the, the, you know, the next 30 minutes to, co to cover all topics. I think food and, and uh, sustainability are, is, is a massive subject. Uh, we just started an, ag an agri-tech, an ag-tech uh, track um, this spring with uh, Zone Ag-Tech to devote specifically to that problem. And how do we, how do we help this uh, subsector you know, grow and, and evolve. Um, and absolutely, we think it's a priority to, 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 to look into. Um, and there, we already have a first cohort of four companies uh, in, that, uh, in that program. And uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, we're gonna, be, we're gonna be working on more uh, uh, programs directly devoted to agriculture, make it more efficient, greenhouse production, you know, greenhouse agriculture as well. Uh, looking at the, uh, the the model in the Netherlands, how do we how do we potentially replicate that in a in an area where we have low cost uh, clean energy? Um, it should be it should be a priority as well. So you know, as I said, we're just 
touching the tip of the iceberg here. Hey, I have a question for you. I think um, there's a, there's a, um, Philippe from from uh, from Neuralink. He, he's basically saying, you know, please confirm the message as I understand it. What you guys are looking for is great teams, scientific background, of course, good teams, because you know they'll they'll find product market fit. They'll have the ideas that'll get there. You just need the team. Uh, sorry, this is a question: to whether yeah. to, to confirm or deny whether that is true. Yeah. Uh, uh, looking for a great team is a huge aspect of this, and it gets back to the earlier conversation that y'all were having around a team's capacity to adjust and pivot and not be overly precious about their baby. Uh, I say this to our teams all the time, not every baby is cute, and I, I firmly believe that. <laughs> so they, we had companies who... Um, you know, started out as a stem cell company and are, are now making uh, molecular compositions of, of new alcohols and liquors uh, because the their approach just didn't work. So they had to just completely pivot and now they're doing great. Um, it's a company called Endless West and, and they're they're selling this, this really interesting and amazing product um, on the marketplace now. Um, that flexibility of mind and a commitment to solving problems is, is really one of the big aspects that we look for. Having the openness to take that journey as a scientist who has just, you know, spent a lifetime establishing your bona fides as an expert in some very narrow domain, uh, being able to have the humility and openness to say, I need to learn this whole other scope and then starting to recognize where your biases may lie um, and, and adjusting accordingly. Um, that's also important. And, and, and one thing that we really try and emphasize a lot, um, d despite my uh, sort of jerky communication right now, is that uh, communication is, is a huge part of this journey and your ability to um, share your idea and your vision um, and your plan and your path to investors, to customers, uh, to, to your family who doesn't understand anything about the technology. You need to be able to have that conversation in you know, eight different ways, still be authentic, um, and, and still convey the importance of what you're doing. And that's, I think that's a skill that um, is sometimes under undervalued, uh, but does require effort. Def definitely requires a lot of effort. It's it's, uh, it's a mind shift for many, and um, and it's not something you're. Some people are born with it, but most people need to uh, to to play it out to learn it, um, for sure. Um, it, in in the U.S. pay where where for where you know our, our startups are are of course thinking because you know there's there's Canada, there's Quebec, there's Montreal, but there's the U.S. pay. What are some of the sectors that that you would say are are more friendly to uh, to, uh, to to the bio? You know, which ones are ready to move today? Uh, I have a very biased perspective. I think there are so many sectors that are already moving in that direction. Um, you know, we at IndieBio have been some of the earliest players in the alternative protein cell-based meat space. Uh, so the food sector, obviously very open to this, agriculture, um, and, uh, and, and so the, the fuel, petrochemical space uh, in general. Um, and then really moving more broadly into materials, whether it's uh, kind of large scale um, commodities type materials, for example, um, in the like building material space, wood space. Um, you know, we have a company that's making a, a plant-based leather now uh, called MicaWorks. Um, and that's the, the fashion industry is, is really opening up to the idea of intaking you know, biotech um, to bring about more sustainability into, into the industry. Um, uh, there are, you know, there are very few sectors um, I can think of that aren't trying to start scratching how biotech can bring about some game-changing technologies into, into their space. Uh, I think the fundamental capability of biology to in, allow for a sort of large-scale 
lower energy process, uh, complex chemistries, things like that really lend itself to a, a wide diversity of sectors. Um, so it, in some ways, this is a, it's like a long conversation <laughs> to, have, to, to do a laundry list. I, I get it. It is, uh, it goes back to the point at the very beginning. It, uh, Pat, Patrick, um, I have a, a more wild question for you. What, what, what's been the worst investments that you've done that are bio-related and, and why? Uh, worst, I, I mean, you, you know, there are investments. Investing in a company is, is, is always a journey, right? You, you, you're going to play some bets, some positions, um, and uh, sometimes the industry takes longer to to deploy to to so i'm not going to name companies uh in in this discussion for sure but i i can i can share lessons learned i mean about uh, you know investing in, in clean tech one thing one thing it's for, for sure is is the um is the time horizon you know i i, I spent a lot of time of my years as an entrepreneur in in digital tech you know where the timelines are much shorter and that's it's something that's always a shock for me when i see roadmaps you know, in hardware, clean tech, sometimes um, I, I, I find those roadmaps very long. And I think that adds a lot of risk to uh, to an investment. Right. So typically, typically long roadmaps are, are, are hard to, you know, to digest as, as an investor. Um, and uh, and some of these industries are, are not at the level of maturity that you would want them to be. So they're not maturing as fast as you want them to be. So you're not seeing the growth that you were expecting. So it's not always the question of, oh, is the entrepreneur uh, flexible enough, or has, has he has he done his job in terms of, you know, pivoting and 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 growing the company? It's also a question of timing. You know, I spent, you know, Teo Taxi for with my personal experience. There was a question of timing and business model, right? Was it a good investment at that time? Of course it was. Did it work out? No, it didn't. Um, is it the fault of the entrepreneurs? Maybe in part, but there's also the industry. There's, but there's there's that timing factor which is absolutely crucial. So th those are the lessons learned, you know, for, for, for from my part as an entrepreneur and an investor. Yeah, timing is is often you know the, the the cited most important factor in in success of a of an innovation. Is is your world around you really conscious that it has that need? And is it time to go? For example, we have uh, um, what, on the audience we have uh, uh, a person named Kanak who, who's uh, who's saying, you know, alternative proteins will will they provide the same satisfaction to consumers as the original animal food? It's it's a complex subject, texture, you know, um, safety, um, genetics. There's there's the GMO question. Um, there is the uh, the questions of uh, of taste, uh, of course, and, and there's so many different elements. You know, will will this? You know, can we consider that the market today is ready? Is it the right time? Um, is this environmental pressure on consumers making them try all these new foods or not? Are is regulations up to date? Will they? You know, are will the regulations be or the regulation context be an obstacle? And, and slow down the roadmap of process. These are all super complex. It's a super complex question, you know. It's and timing. Yes, is one one answer. Pay. I, I see you were about to answer yourself. Uh, well, I, should, I was going to make a com comment about timing and in, in in this context. I think we talk a lot about timing in part because we we're often and this is natural talking about venture backed startups, um, and that's where these timelines tend to be quite short because of the the nature of how that the financing dynamics are um, but there's there's also room for and, and within the ecosystem it, and in partnership with governments and Canada has done a great job with um, with injecting non-dilutive capital into the ecosystem for example uh, where where s slower capital in conjunction with some of this higher higher speed capital if you will um, can can allow for uh, some of that timing mismatch between the market and the and the tech um, and that push pull tension uh, to to allow technologies uh, to help get that market caught up with with where they're headed. Um, it, 
it's, I think, a piece that often gets lost because everybody's really focused on these uh, outsized returns and venture. Um, but there are, you know, there are other, there are other models of, of startups that, that can do great, that can bring about really meaningful products into the marketplace and still bring about innovation um, as well. And uh, it also very true about whether or not the regulatory environment is is uh, is caught up uh, with the market as well, um, and that is in, in in part education on the part of the startups. If if you're going to be a sector defining or sector creating startup, uh, there is a you know the responsibility in some ways to to help with educating the consumer, help with educating the regulators around. Uh, different aspects of the technology and why it is safe and why why it is meaningful and, and why it's worth supporting uh, through these non-financial levers as well. Yeah, I I, I heard both Patrick and, and yourself pay to to bring up regulations and it's so important. People don't understand that re regulations is not an immediate result, but it's a massive result when you build up the regul the the relationships with the regulatory authorities. For two reasons, one of which you'll, you'll influence more than one imagines because you're in the field and they need that information. And, and the other thing is, uh, the other side of the coin is that you'll be informed often uh, before others are of where the regulations are going and you'll position your products accordingly. So, so I think that framework of regulations in, in all industries that are regulated, and, and food certainly is, and so is, is the... Uh, food, yeah, travel. Travel, Travel is regulated. Energy, every, every you know, so so many things are regulated. In in, um, and and Luc, when when you look across Canada, because as as you're working with 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 IRAP and, and IRAP is a, is a national infrastructure, and RC is a national infrastructure. The name says it all. Do, do you see ecosystems of bio that are more alive at one end of Canada than at others? You know, yeah. in this whole experience of yours with moleculars and, and bio stuff. Yeah, sure. And uh, part of my job is to be a uh, part of the bio product sector team. And we see uh, much more activities on the west side of Canada and uh, in the maritime, not more in Quebec and Ontario. Uh, for the drug business, it's mostly in Ontario and Quebec. So, yeah, there is a diversity of uh, activities for the different sectors. Uh, one thing I like to say is that nature is popular presently with the young Canadian population. So everything that's relate to nature will be popular, is already popular and will remain very popular. And uh, for the startups, I like to leave just one important message. There is a new organization called Innovation Canada their mission is to make matches between SMEs needs and programs, federal and provincial programs. And they have a program browser that it is that has a very strong backend. You can rely on it. Okay, so that's a really good tool. You're you're pointing to a tool that says, you know, you're uh, you're you you've got many opportunities in Canada. Yeah. And um, and that site is is one that guides you through them and through 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 the meanders sometimes of what that means. Exactly, whatever you need, uh, help in marketing, to hire people, to uh, for IP, any needs you have, this should be your first contact in Canada. It's free. Great. Um, we will post that uh, later to to the teams. Uh, we have a, a question from from Jay Chen, who's who's seeing you know. Um, who wants to go deeper into this uh, uh, regulatory context? And and the three of you feel free free to answer. They're they're saying, you know, what does it mean tangibly in terms of actions? Is is it acceptability? Is it moving towards? Is it um, early, you know, very early stage discussions? I'm seeing a bunch of words thrown in there, but they're basically. I think the question is asking, you know. What, 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 how do you materialize regulations or relationships yeah. with regulations? Uh, I mean, I can, I can provide a, a little bit of context here. And a, a giant caveat being I'm not terribly familiar with the regulatory bodies in Canada. Um, but, uh, you know, for our companies, 
uh, whether it's food or therapeutics or, or you know medical drugs. Um, the uh, obviously the FDA is 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 where you need to point your direction uh, and number one, educating yourself around what the existing regulations are. Um, and number two, actually uh, really diving in and understanding where there are um, open channels of communication with the regulators. Uh, you know, the FDA has, has many different programs in place to allow uh, companies that are the early stages of development of their technologies to have early conversations with regulators or regulatory scientists uh, to help inform the companies around how the regulators think about things. The, the flip side of that is also that it gives the companies an opportunity to educate the, the, the folks from the FDA as well about what's new, what's different, and, and why it, it's, um, it's, a, it's a good it's a good safe solution. Um, you know, we we are we are more broadly working in in sort of the agriculture space, um, and in the U.S. There's a, a a shift in in how we're thinking of the um, bioengineered products space, um, and that is that's an evolving regulatory framework that um, the last I looked at it, I don't think has even been fully defined. Um, and so, you know, in those types of sectors, what what's really helpful is if you're a company that's working in a bit of a gray space, regulatory wise, um, providing education out into the world, you know, whether it's through blog posts, whether it's through uh, participation in conferences, whether it's, you know, in any opportunity where you can uh demonstrate that you are a thought leader in this space and that you have a deep understanding of it and you can share share that information to um, allow people from outside your space to become more comfortable and familiar with the technology that can go a long way uh, towards uh, I think smoothing that path out it is a long process if if you're really talking about a kind of extra regulatory space um, or, or something that's you know got very nascent a regulatory framework around it. Um, so it's something that it, it's, it's good to be aware of from the outset um, without I think, overly letting yourself be constrained um, by imagined or perceived regulations. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, sorry, yes, please go ahead, go ahead. No, I, I was going to back up with Pete saying it. What, what I found in, in the bio, I, I did a bit of research uh, uh, a few months ago, and, and what I found in the U.S. Um, was that there was a lot of trade associations which were moving in, uh, uniting um, on on this on this front um, of of the of the new regulations, and and so there is organizations out there that are feeding each other pretty good ideas as well. Just the 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 collaboration is leading them to learn about each other's markets and and and, and opportunities. So so it's a it's a value building beyond the regulatory framework. It's it's allowing them to understand where they all need to go. And there's so much room in this space that it's not about who's going to grab the the you know the, the little piece of pie. It's about who's going to help grow the pie. So so it's it's a very different um, very early stage framework. Yes, Patrick, you your thoughts, please. If, if I may um, add, um, you know, personal experience with with um, regulatory authorities, um, it's something that you might want to push aside as an entrepreneur. But I, I strongly recommend that um, you know, for any entrepreneur, to to start looking into uh, you know regulations in your industry, understand them, educate yourself on them, and then start acting. As Pay was mentioning. Um, you know, going through industry associations um, that can relay information to government bodies, participating in meetings with uh, elected officials. And what you're doing is, you know, we have to remove the term, the stigma of lobbying uh, from, from that discussion. It's, it's more about exchanging ideas and making regulations evolve over time and participating in the, the evolution of your own industry. I think as an entrepreneur, it's not only a task; it's, it's more than even a responsibility. It, it should be, it should be part of of of, uh, of your ethos, part of doing business, right? You're you're not alone in your ecosystem. You are part of of a group of of entrepreneurs, 
you're 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 with you know uh, with government officials as well that have a common interest in making the ecosystem grow. So I think I think it has to be part of um, of your 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 realm of responsibilities as an entrepreneur for sure. Thank you. And and Luc, do do you see regulations in in from from your perspective as as influencing the uh, the way you guys allow um, or yeah, allow, that, but, this is but this is very people. this is very important, and we have specialists in the regulatory processes all across Canada in all sectors. As an example, I will tell you uh, a little story. Uh, we had a client. Uh, he were he was early in the R and D, and he was working on us new cell line to produce recombinant proteins and we just suggest we just ask him do you think your process will work with this cell line with which was a pre-approved cell line already used in other processes and he said oh sure we said work with this cell line it will uh, make the regulatory uh, acceptance much 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 easier so they have to address regulatory problem very early in the in the process it will save a lot of money and time and and feasibility you know the, the economic yeah. feasibility validation uh, yeah. we have a, a a challenging question here from from a, a gentleman named daniel he's saying you know we're, we're talking in this context of bio we're, we're we're really framing ourselves um like it or not in in a deep tech startup world and he's saying what's the incentive to stay in canada when if i reach out to american investors or if i move to the u.s I can, you know, raise 10 times, maybe a hundred times more money than I ever will in Canada. So, so why should I, why should I stay is the ask. So that's, <laughs> that's the main problem we had in Canada for the last 50 years. And that it, it is still a major problem for ARA because when a company needs more, more capital to develop the, to develop the product, they move where is the money and the money is in US or Europe, but mostly US. And uh, therefore, we uh, they have to have found uh, the money we gave them, but that's peanuts versus what they're getting. I don't know the answer. Well, I think I think that we, um, you know, it, it's there's there's a question of mindset. I think I think as an ecosystem in Canada, we need to evolve. Uh, we need to we need to be better at that at that game uh, in terms of you know being competitive with with uh, uh, U.S. investors. So the ecosystem itself has to raise the bar uh, to, to be able to keep entrepreneurs here. I have many examples of entrepreneurs who left Montreal to go to, to you know, to in the Bay Area, for, for instance. Um, and it's a shame, you know, it's a shame to lose entrepreneurs uh, that will be building an ecosystem elsewhere. Uh, folks that have been educated here that will, you know, so, but on the flip side, I think we also have to make our, our entrepreneurs more sensitive to the importance of of, of um, the building wealth locally, uh, and and you know giving back, giving back to your community, and being part of a community. I think an entrepreneur cannot be separated from its community. You know, and and uh, yes, you can you can set up shop anywhere in the world and go where the money is. But but at at the end of the day, there's also I think we also have a social responsibility in a sense. You know, maybe I'm idealistic, but. I think entrepreneurs uh, have to be part of a social fabric and have to play a role in that sense. So it's not always just about money, you know? Yeah, it, in, 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 even in a very pragmatic sense, you know, there, there is hiring, there is expertise, there is, you know, culture, there is, you know, R&D tax credits, there is, um, there, there is supply chains, you know, business life isn't just about money. And, and as a matter of fact, um, Maybe uh, I can ask pay that, but but I, I find that, you know, uh, yes, uh, VC source funding is an important vector. Um, it brings validation to more funding and, and it's definitely uh, a go. But in, in many cases, um, the VCs only represent a very small percentage of, of the actual, you know, companies that make it. Um, it it's not just a journey of, of VCs. And, and if you're gonna do it, then then you're probably I would suspect someone will be more able and more comfortably able to do this if they're in their own national land. They they know the space. Uh, you know, uh, so number one, I'll say, yeah, come come to Andy Bio, <laughs> go 
don't come to America. But seriously, uh, you know, we, we actually <laughs> we <you>. have. <laughs> we, 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 we've seen many do it. <laughs> well, we'll take you with open arms. But uh, we, we have companies that um, have come from Canada, are, are still in Canada, um, and have, and, and I will say this very explicitly, we like Canadian companies in part because Canada has a really strong combination of infrastructure. Uh, you, you know, y'all have lab space seemingly coming out of your ears. Um, and, uh, you know, our companies, we, we've seen them benefit from the investment that Canada has made into making infra infrastructure available to startups, which is a, a very difficult uh, capital cost. Um, and then in combination with programs like the IRAP programs, all the all the various regional and federal um, funding schemes that y'all have available for your startups that actually really do quite a bit to supercharge uh, what what our startups are able to accomplish, um, even if the dollar amount seems small. Um, so I think I, I see we get excited when we see Canadian companies and it's uh, not because we can dangle potentially more money or, or because we think that they'll come to San Francisco. It's, uh, it's because we see the value that the Can Canadian ecosystem and, and your various provincial systems that are in place to, um, to help nurture and, uh, and, and launch startups using using the resources that y'all have in place um not to mention you know the the great educational system that y'all have and which is a huge piece of 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 why um why your startups are you know interesting to us um yeah so i i think my, capital is one thing the ecosystem is a whole other thing and 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 y'all do have have uh, great systems in place yeah, and, and uh, just to, to give you some numbers to, to compare, uh, Montreal is an example when compared to Boston has the same number of university students. It actually has the same number of PhDs globally. Um, we, 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 we need to get better at getting our PhDs to, uh, to go from lab to market. We don't score it nearly as well as, as Boston does, but, uh, but, but I, I think we need to keep going on that, on that journey and, and accelerate that. Um, I have, you know, we, we have a few minutes left. I have a question uh, to us, the, the accelerators, because I, I think these uh, incubators, sorry, and, and university-based infrastructures, um, because we, we, we do stuff leveraging, you know, um, our donors' money, our university's money, our, our uh, government's money, and, um, and, and we basically charge, you know, little, if, if anything at all, to, to our startups. We, we ask them to commit. We ask them to deliver. That that's the reason why we we we, we like to, to help them if they do commit and continue to deliver. Um, but but what would you give us as advice so so we can help them be better ready uh, when they come to your doorsteps? Uh, wh whether you know, let, let's go around the table. Uh, maybe we'll start with you, Luke. They have to do their homework. You know, if they often they come to us and they say, uh, we have an innovation. There is no competition. And it will sell. Basically, we hear this. Okay, we need. They have to do their homework. Solid. Show a solid business case. Uh, make sure I will say wow. Okay, you need the wow factor to be prepared. Yeah. And and you, Patrick, what what do you like? I like to I like to see a, a clear value proposition. You know, with customer validation. Talk to me about your clients. Talk to me about your conversations with clients. What's the feedback? What's the traction? What's your value prop, right? And that's that's sometimes, and, and, and those questions oftentimes open up a can of worms because no, we didn't talk to too many clients. Our value prop, prop isn't clear. We have three products in one. You know, we have a services business. We have a product business. We have an R&D business. And it's, so that's, I, I think that's, for me, those are the, is, is, is one critical aspect of the discussion so you get wowed with the clients by the value client. prop in clients yep. yep yeah so how how well connected is is the um um entrepreneur with his or her uh, clients yeah and um on on a closing word uh 
please pay. Um, what, what's your perspective? What do I need to do to get these uh, these teams ever better ready? Uh, I think yes to both what Luke and Patrick have already said. Uh, for us, what will be the wow factor is convince us and help us believe and understand that you are truly committing your life to solving this problem that you say you're going to solve. We want to know that you're committed, you have conviction, and that this is something that you're absolutely going to put everything that you have into it to make it happen. You're, you're kind of saying you guys are dedicating yourselves to willing a to winning Olympic gold medals. And it's not going to be in a few weeks. It's going to take years of true dedication <laughs> and, and hard training and hard work and better get stuff done guys. <laughs> yeah, This is the, the Olympics of the Olympics. This is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I relate having been down that journey for, for years now. Um, often when I see these, um, these sports players and, and greats, I'm, I'm a fan of rate of sailing. And when I see these, these racers and their teams make it around the world in, in 90 days. I'm, I'm odd at how much, you know, dedication there is years and years of dedication to get to that level. So entrepreneurship is the same. Um, listen, thank you very much, everyone. You, you were a great, um, great panel, great audience. And uh, it's, it's been a real pleasure to, uh, to hold this event today. And um, thanks, Pay, Thanks, Luke. Thanks, Patrick, for, for again, for joining us.